All right, should we get started? Um, yeah, we have someone who's called in. Um, we can check the number looks familiar. Um, the person, uh, 9169, I've turned your, your mic on. Are you one of the art winners? Um, yes, Isabella Gill. Um, I'm trying to log into Zoom, but it's just, it's just pending still. Great. Okay. Well, we have you, we have you on the phone line. Okay. Ah! All right. Well, let's get started. And what about, and we had just another person, Kim Trammell, is that? Yeah, that's a parent of it. Offer a participant. Okay, we'll be good. Hi, Gavin. Gavin, we see you, buddy. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, I think we're I think we're ready to move on. No. Okay, well, Michelle, do you want to mute everybody and uh, I could just start the meeting? I will mute everybody right now. And then there's the anyway. Oops. <laughs> good to go. There we go. Okay, well, good evening, commissioners. And it looks like everybody's here. We're missing Commissioner Bennett, of course. Um, Chris is going to fill you in later. He's um, already left town, uh, but thank you all for uh, attending the uh, July commissioner meeting. Um, it's July 7th. We missed a meeting last month, uh, but I'd like to call the meeting to order. And um, this again is a very special meeting for all of the participants here. And, uh, and for me, it's my first uh, meeting as a chair for the commissioner meeting today. So it's again, very special. I don't have a gavel, but I stole a little something from uh, the drum set. So I'll have the, um, uh, the, the, this little thing as a gavel here. Um, Chris, would you like to take a roll call? Uh, yes, thank you. Um, Chair um, Chabra. Present. Vice Chair Ganapathy. Oh. Commissioner Kara. Here. Commissioner Thompson. I think everyone's muted. We, we, yeah, we were muted. <laughs> and Commissioner Lake. Here. All right. Well, everybody's here. Great. Thank you, Chris. Um, Chris, would you also like to declare the agenda as having been posted? Yes, uh, the agenda has been posted per the government code. Awesome, thank you. Is this and, where uh, I request the the you know number six to be brought up right in front so we can have all our lovely students speak and be done with that item before? Almost there, almost there. Almost. Under oh, let me know when. Almost Sorry. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll 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 hand it over to you. Okay. And uh, we're just going to skip over the pledge because uh, we don't have the flag here. Okay. Um, Chris, do we have any public comments? Um, I don't have any public comment, comments and I don't see anyone, um, any attendees that are um, muted. Um, so I don't believe there's any public comments for items not on the agenda. Okay, wonderful. Thank you. Um, all right. Well, can we get a motion, commissioners, to adopt tonight's agenda? So moved. Seconded. Wait, wait, wait. This is your, this is your chance, Simone. This is oh, this is where I do it. Okay. I would like to, <laughs> I would like to move the... Let me see the item number, item number six, right six. to the top so that we can, yeah, so we can get done with a window out context update with our young students waiting. Wonderful. Um, anybody to second that? Second. Great. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Great, all right, great. The agenda has been adopted. Um, just to remind everyone, if you're not speaking, just uh, put yourself on mute. And we're moving on to reports. And as Suman mentioned, we're gonna first bring up the window art contest update. It's all yours, Suman. Okie dokes. 
Um, let me get this started. Okay, I'm going to start sharing. So, Mom, would you like me to bring it up? Um, I think it's come up. So, can you see it? No, not yet. No, we can't see it. Okay, wait, let me just try one last time. I'm going to redo that. Let's share screen. And then when you share the screen, go ahead and press enter or just share it. Do you, see a green, do, you see it? do you see a green border around your slide, around your presentation? Do you see a green border all around it? Um, this thing disappeared again. Sorry, I'm gonna put, I'm gonna just ask my husband to help me. We can just do this, but. Gautam, what would someone do without you? I know. I don't know. <laughs> The screen sharing has failed to start. We just tried this and it worked beautifully, but it's not working yeah, right it now. It worked a little while ago. Yeah. Does anyone else have a copy of the PowerPoint? Well, I can I can do it, but just a minute. I think it's going to come. Try this again. I do have a copy ready. Am I on mute? Am I on mute? No, you're not on mute. Oh, okay. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> worked perfectly just now. <laughs> crazy. Yeah. I would suggest if uh, Chris has a copy to have him try sharing. Right. Let me just, um... Oh, there we go. I think it's going to work. Oh. Oh. Yep. I just saw it. Um, you just want to yeah, click the presentation. I think you shared the wrong window. So we're, we're seeing your screen, Suman. We're just not seeing the PowerPoint. Oh, I see. You just closed out of this one. I think you just selected the wrong window. We or or you should spot. be able to alt tab. You should be able to alt tab and it'll bring up your other screen, whatever's behind this. I think sometimes Kitty has to, if you, depending on if you chose your screen or your window, it might, mm -hmm. alt tab may or may not work. Okay. So this is not being shared. What can you see right now? Um, nothing. Now we can't see anything. It was working a little while ago. Okay. Right. So you started. You started screen sharing. That's good. There you go. Okay, there we go. There we go. Perfect. That's it. We got it. Okay. Fantastic. I'm going to just start. Okay. All right, let's get going. Sorry about that. <laughs> so I'm here to talk about Morgan Hill Together, the shelter in place window up competition for youth and Morgan Hill Community Disaster Relief Fundraiser. 
so uh, it's been a month and a half since we started working on the Morgan Hills Together project and it's been time well spent. We all know about the power of self-expressive art to move us, to make us smile, or teary, to connect, to heal, and this project has certainly done that. And of course, not everyone who loves art enjoys contests. And we acknowledge everyone who expressed themselves and put up window art, whether or not they entered it in this contest. I know there are quite a few. In fact, please keep creating and sharing. Um, so this was a theme-based competition for youth from pre-K to 12th grade in 5H categories. The deadline was June 30th. Entries were judged and results were out on July 4th in all my years since uh, 2000, I think. This has been the fastest turnaround ever. <laughs> so this is a joint venture between many organizations. Members volunteered their time and expertise from the Morgan Hill Community Foundation, from the El Toro Culture and Arts Committee, Morgan Hill City and Library Culture and Arts Commission, Anarup Systems, Morgan Hill Art School, and the Morgan Hill Unified School District. Thank you, a special thank you to artist Mark J. Hoffman for allowing us to use this delightful image of a masked mushroom as a mascot. Prizes, thank you for your generosity, were contributed by the Morgan Hill Community Foundation and El Toro Culture and Arts Committee. And of course, this competition was created with a dual purpose. It was as a vehicle for self-expression for our youth, as it reflected on our interconnectedness, even while apart in this COVID-19 uh, shelter in place order. Um, and to raise awareness of the newly formed Morgan Hill Disaster Relief Fund. It's allowed our youth to participate in a philanthropic cause while they express themselves through art. This fund is umbrellaed under the Morgan Hill Community Foundation and is currently supporting those in need already due to the COVID-19 and SIP orders. The community is encouraged to contribute to its funds and help out our most needy community members in Morgan Hill. So while competition motivates them to do their best, students make a significant difference just by participating in it. The creative, beautiful, and self-expressive artwork, which you're going to see soon, we receive truly connected with our entire community in these extraordinary times. Donations made by the public benefited a worthy cause. So the first rule was to enjoy creating an original piece of art. Students were asked to express themselves about what Morgan Hill together meant to them. And there are different great divisions. I will go over them when I'm showing to you. I won't do it right now. Um, and students had to create the window art, take a picture and submit it online with a fill student entry form. Parents, of course, were requested not to alter the work in order to encourage and recognize each student's individual creativity. Entries could have a title and an artist statement stating what inspired the work and how it expressed the theme and that was used by judges. So that was very helpful. At this point, I'd like to thank artists Carly Lefield and Pamela Mador for holding Facebook Live art classes and inspiring students. And also to Marilyn Wendt for promoting the contest tirelessly. It made a big difference. Now, let's look at the artwork. This is our, our very first primary age category. They're all delightful. I tried to fit in as many as I could on the screen. So we have the very first one, which is Love by Gavin Wendt. Hey Gavin, hope you can see this. All You Need Is Love by Jackson Felice. We are all growing through this together by Paisley, Losicero, Doherty. Together at Library by Myla Carr. We Love Morgan Hill by Trent Howard. And I was very, very impressed with all the mobiles. So we have a lot of budding kinetic sculpture artists and they're going to be all Alexander Calder's very soon, I know. Um, there's the Morgan Hill Mushrooms Stand Together by Lucy Cole. Another wonderful mobile, Pokemon Zaps Coronavirus for Morgan Hill by Sebastian Lure. And you have Morgan Hill by Penny. Um, of course, when this was judged, I just wrote it as Morgan Hill by student, you know, by participant. <laughs> Go on to the next one. Another wonderful mobile. We have Love All Around by Mia Trammell. 
wonderful window art love is a kite by william osborne i i wish you could read all the artist statements we will definitely post it online so you can read the delightful artist statements unfortunately it would make this way too long so you have my art by lucas miramonte there's lovely me at home all the time and that's what we've been doing haven't we by aria cole this together by lucas canizaris uh Geneve hazel's rainbow which is absolutely absolutely delightful we even has a little photograph on it open arms by rally gage another mobile then you have the great indoors by a duo the brotherly duo of sam and john wiley Another mobile race winner by August Aguirre. We Stand Together by Isabel Gill. Slime Sun Catchers by Lily Fiorito. The Rainbow of Morgan Hill by Ava Lee Maciel. The Safe at Home by Lily. Oh, so we're going on to the next category, which is the Intermediate Age category, which is third to fifth grade. The Safe at Home by Lily Lefeld. We Rise by Lifting Others by Lucy Fleischer. Love Comes in All Sizes by Miriam Shemtov. We All Need a Break by Jake Moss. Floating Heart by Levitz Gage, another one of these delightful mobiles. On to the middle age category, we have Be Safe and Healthy by Jimena Ortega. We have Paint Your World Beautiful by Emma Matson. You can see how very creative that is. All those little people holding, holding a paintbrush and you can paint your world beautiful using your colors and your creativity. Finding Hope by Isaiah Brown. There's Morgan Hill Together by Evie Leifeld. Morgan Hill Soaring by Sarah Matson. Butterflies Together by Clara Shantar. In the high, uh, the high age category, or the high school age category, we have Still Catching Dreams by Ashley Fiorito, Unite by Natalie Nielsen. We are, we are all in this together by Madeleine Collier, and we have, we will get through this by Alexis Long. So those were the various delightful and most creative, uh, wonderful um, entries. I'm going to talk about a little bit about the judging process. We had a, a panel of seven judges and the judges were given, were given various um, art, art age groups. So no family member judged a category in which their kids or grandkids participated. Judging was blind. This means that the judges only saw the artwork with a number and the artist statement. They did not know uh, whose artwork that was. And each entry, this is a really important part, that each entry was scored for artistic merit and emotional impact or the ability to touch a heart's spirit. In fact, interpretation of the theme or, you know, the, the way they interpreted this very beautiful theme, that was given the most weightage, way more over technique. Coming on to the results. So as you know, there are these five great divisions. I just want to say a little bit about the fifth grade division. We also had one for special artist division. Uh, we did not receive any entries in this category, but I was told that there were some artists who were working diligently. And, um, and even though they didn't enter it finally, I'm so glad we have this division, this category. So two awardees for division were selected, first place and second place, and we have one grand prize winner across all categories. And how that was decided was that the top, the top first prize among all the categories, we had another set of artists who, uh, who then determined who the winner was. And of course, all of them are going to be recognized by local uh, Morgan Hill leaders and news media. This is the very first place where they're going to be recognized. The other statement, uh, which was describe the work and how it relates to theme, was considered when judging interpretation of theme. So what are they going to get? They're going to all get gift cards, e-gift cards, of course, in uh, our virtual world, which is also environmentally friendly. Uh, the price of gift cards of their choice to local businesses in the amounts of $125, which is a, for the grand prize, $100, which is first prize in each category. So we have four of those and four um, second prize categories, which are $75 each. Thank you again to the very generous um, their contributors. 
So now here are the results of the top two winners in each category and a grant and a grand prize winner. So what we got, what I'm going to do is I will go one by one. We start with second place first, and then we'll go on to the first prize and the grand winner, um, the grand prize winner. So when I call your name, if you would love to speak, we'd love to hear you. So we have the second prize, primary age category pre-K to two, and the winner is The Rainbow of Morgan Hill by Ava Lee Maciel. As you will notice, this is um, a wonderful mask which says all faiths, all colors, all love, all protected in one city, Morgan Hill. Um, that was just utterly beautiful. Judges gave really lovely comments, uh, which I have forwarded to the artist who did this. So Ava, I know you are present. Did Ava want to say anything? Come on, speak. Say, say your name. Please. <laughs> say your name. I think she's a little shy. Maybe if you were to ask her a question, the prompter. Oh, lovely. So Ava, would you, would you like to tell us uh, uh, what you, like what you did to make this artwork? Did you have fun doing it? Yes, I did. I had lots of fun doing it. You did? And how were you doing during this stay at home time that we're all having? Good. You're doing good. And you, do you love art? Yes. You do. Well, if any of the other <laughs> if any of the other commissioners would ask Ava any questions. Ava Lee, this is Paul. I just like to say congratulations. You did a very beautiful piece of art. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ava Lee. Congratulations. It was absolutely wonderful. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, so we move on to the second prize, Intermediate Age Category, third to fifth grade. And Safe at Home by Lily Lefeld won it. As you can see, it is absolutely stunning. And I know we have Lily Lefeld. Lily, did you want to say something? Yes. So I'm really excited that we had this um, artwork entry and it made me have a lot of fun working on this artwork. Wonderful. Thank you for creating an absolutely wonderful piece. It's just really vibrant and beautiful and it's just so perfectly proportioned to and immediately just, you know, it's really eye catching and I'm sure everyone just driving around near your home must be really enjoying it too. So thank you for doing this. Thank you. Lily, thank you. I love your uh, painting. It's beautiful. You've got the mushroom and the bicycle with the bicycle trail. What's that little bag over there? Does that look like a, a crown or a bag? Does that, is that a loaf of bread? Yeah, it's a bag of groceries. Oh, that's wonderful. And I, I like how it says, don't worry. On, that's, that was a great thing. Right. Don't Thank worry. you, Lily. Thank you. Beautiful painting. Thank you. Fantastic. Thank you again, Lily. Thank you. Um, so we're going on to the middle school age category, and we have "Be Safe and Healthy" by by Jimmy Ortega or Jimena Ortega. I know you are you are there. Would you like to say something? <laughs> Thank you for the prize. You're Did you? You did an absolutely wonderful one. It absolutely showed what is really important during these SIP orders wear your mask, wash your hands often, stay at home. So, um, so uh, how, can you tell us about your process and why you decided to put this? Because it's it's really it's wonderful. Um, how I did it was 
um, first I was thinking of how to make make um, the um, pra the artwork, and then that's when I saw that I was thinking of of putting at the top Warren Hill together since it was all about um the all about more Hill being together during this time. And I thought putting and reminding um everyone about wearing their masks, uh, washing their hands and staying at home. Fantastic. And you did a very wonderful job of embodying what it's all about. Do you have any of the other commissioners wanting to say anything? Oh, good job, Jimena. Uh, Jimena, you know, I, I like the stay-at-home part of it, where the person is just lying in bed and sleeping, yeah. and the pizza. <laughs> Great work! Thank you. And congratulations. Thank you. And are we going to the second prize for so the high school age category, which is "Unite" by Natalie Nielsen? As you can see, it's a picture of her window. So she had. An entire she had even more of it when she um, when she uploaded her picture but what I did was I zoomed in on the artwork but you can see from the reflection that she did indeed have it on her window uh, Natalie are you here I think maybe not well congratulations again <laughs> so we move on to first prize winners well, um, the first prize of the primary age category, pre-K to two, is We Stand Together by Isabella Gill. And this is a very exciting piece of artwork. And I know Isabella is here. And Isabella, did you want to say something? Or her mom? I know you're on, on the phone. Well, maybe it's hard when it's just on the phone, but Isabella, congratulations. Your artwork was really appreciated by all and was a close contender for grand prize, I have to say that. Congratulations. And we have uh, the first prize intermediate age category, We Rise by Lifting Others by Lucy Fleischer. And I'm sure it's no secret, you know the results, you, uh, you know she's also the grand prize winner. <laughs> so we're going to Thank wait you. till the end. Uh, <laughs> did you want to speak now? Do you want to speak right at the end where you have the floor? <laughs> yeah. I'll speak at the end. Okay, perfect. Well, congratulations, Lucy. You're going to be calling your name again. And first prize. This was, uh, this was so striking and so powerful, the imagery. Absolutely. Yeah, the Morgan Hill together by E.D. Leifeld. Absolutely. So E.D., would you like to say, or oh, E.V. rather, isn't it E.V.? E yeah. Well, let's go. Back. Um, yeah, um, I had lots of fun doing it. And I just liked doing it. It was really fun to create and draw out the mushrooms. Which one? Yeah. Thank you for um, having the opportunity for us to do it. Well, we're so excited that you participated. You definitely have a oh, talent and skill and I know you're gonna go places. It's just absolutely wonderful. Any, <laughs> any commissioners like to say anything? Yeah, Edie, great job. That's, um, I love those mushrooms. It says Morgan Hill together. Are those little elves holding the together banner? Yeah. That's great. Well, good job and congratulations. Thank you. Wonderful. And we go to the first prize, high school age category, ninth to 12th. Uh, we will get through this by Lexi Long. And, um, I know Alexis is here. She's ready to speak. So Alexis, the floor is yours. Hi. Okay. Um, I really enjoyed this contest. I got like, my dad got an email through my school about it. And it took me a few days, especially for the clouds. And I wanted to challenge myself with the category and um, just put in as much work as I can into it, especially since I'm trapped inside. 
<laughs> which is all for the good, obviously. Um, and just thank you so much for the opportunity. It was a lot of fun. It's wonderful. I know you wrote something beautiful, Alexis. Did you want to say a little something with your artist statement? I'm sure everyone would love to listen. Um, the main thing about my statement is I wanted to not only put the um, purpose of like Corona and staying inside with the masks, but also I wanted to, during the time that I put it up there, it was still Pride Month for the LGBTQ community. So that's why the rainbow clouds are up there. And then um, I also, with the Black Lives Matter movement, I wanted to put um, two different like um, races together and show that um, no matter where you stand or where we are, we're together in this and we're all gonna be okay. That's so beautiful. I wanted to say something on this one. I did not read Ali's art, her statement, but everything you just said, you feel in this piece of art, I probably could have told you that that's what your art represented. And I thought it was incredibly beautiful and inspiring. And I particularly love that the, they don't have faces. Somehow that actually makes it a more powerful statement of unity that they don't have individual faces drawn in under the mask. So I, I think this is spectacular. Thank you for creating this. Thank you. And I, I, I would also like to say something. I just love the way Alexis, how it, it seems that, uh, you know, the, the people and the clouds are all connected together. So it was like we are one with, with the world and the planet that we live in and that, that it really comes through in a very powerful way. The imagery here, very, very good. Thank you so much, I appreciate that. And I totally agree. This one gave me chills when I first saw it and when I read it. And, um, you know, as the organizer, I didn't get to judge it. And <laughs> but, but I was just utterly, utterly um, just so, I don't know, I was just so moved by this artwork. I really loved it. Thank you. I'm glad you guys liked it. <laughs> it was welcome. So now we are going over to our grand prize winner across all categories. Um, and this was We Rise by Lifting Others, and especially very uplifting statement in these times by Lucy Fleischer. And Lucy, I know you are waiting to speak, so go for it. So this, I'm really surprised that I'm the one that actually got this. With everyone else who was on this call right here, when I looked at mine, I'm like, wow. Mine looks a lot less creative than some of these, and I just can't believe that I somehow still got the grand prize. Thank you very much. That is so sweet and humble of you, Lucy. You definitely touched all the judges, and as you know, um, it was also, it was not only your message and the artwork, which was wonderful, but also the fact that it very clearly showed that it was window art, your negative spaces and your positive spaces. All, all judges wrote about how you got that perfectly. So you were the perfect storm of a lot of different elements that made you get this grand prize. So you definitely, even though you are so lovely and humble, you definitely deserve it. Congratulations. Thank you. All I had to say about my artwork is when I first saw this and we took the picture, all I could think is it looks like she is actually floating off the ground. If you look at it like it's a real girl, it looks like she is floating off the ground. Yes, that's right. Instead of her being on the ground, if we had positioned it a little lower. <laughs> yeah. A great job, Lucy. Congratulations. Thank you. Lucy, I like just uh, when you look at this, it's so hopeful. Just the lighting in the trees, uh, it, it really, when you look at this, you know, it, it's really about us. It's not about me. It's about helping others. And, and that the true measure of success of any community is how we help each other. And, and that brightens up the entire community in the neighborhood. And I think you've just 
capture that so so beautifully in a very simple way. Uh, so it really speaks to me that by helping others, we really lift up our neighborhood around us and just brighten it up. Thank you so much. So well said, Paul. You always have these most beautiful philosophical words. Just well, the art is very good. So. <laughs> it's definitely you were able to like to speak to it so beautifully too. Lovely. Um, so I shall move on. So this, of course, is just um, just the results all over again. Everything that we just went through, so it's there for the PowerPoint. And all I want to say is congratulations to all the winners. Well done to all the participants. I'm so glad all of you participated. Please continue doing art, creating, uh, expressing yourself. It's really, really important because you give joy to so many people when you do that, but you yourselves are transformed and changed. And art is really powerful that way. Keep at it. Congratulations. Congratulations, everybody. Thank you. Right, thank you, Suman. Uh, thank you for uh, representing the Library, Culture and Arts Commission to making this contest and fundraiser happen. So you did a, you know, amazing job coordinating this um, with all those meetings, uh, just fantastic. So on behalf of the commission, I wanna thank Suman and um, Matt and Marilyn from the Morgan Hill Community Foundation. Um, and then of course, Nick uh, and the judges, Steve Batando, Heather, Elvira, um, and um, uh, Pamela, of course, from the El Toro Arts and uh, uh, Commission, uh, the, the, the uh, committee. Uh, but thank you all. And I know I'm missing names here, but the parents, participants, the winners, great job. Thank you very much. I think we're going to have, um, you know, probably Nick and Matt and Steve probably going to speak to this, right? Yeah. I'm waiting to hear from you. Nick, Nick, you're muted. There you go. First and foremost, this is absolutely the best Zoom meeting I've ever been in. So I don't, I, whatever we were doing right here, we just need to continue that flow. It's just wonderful. So, Simone, thank you for allowing me a few minutes to, to salute all of the Window Arts competition participants, uh, our grade level one and two place, uh, place winners, and of course, special recognition to Lucy uh, uh, for her grand prize winning submission, We Rise by Lifting Others. Uh, I really want to speak to Lily, Ava, Jimena, Lucy, Isabella, Alexis, uh, Evie, the, or on the phone or on the call today. Please know, thank you for not only the artwork that you developed, but thank you for being here because now we understand what touched your heart when you created your art. And please know that it all touched all of our hearts as well. And I, I have to tell you, I don't think there was probably a dry eye through all the judges that we went through each one of the submissions. It truly has an impact, not only to you, but certainly to all of us that had a chance to be a part of this effort. I would also like to express that for all of the artists that participated in the competition, that each and every one of your submissions instilled a message of community togetherness, inspiring us all to believe that by standing together, we will get through this pandemic. You know, our primary intent and hope with the competition was to provide our youth and young adults an opportunity to open up a window, to give us a look inside of how the pandemic may be affecting them and more importantly, what the emotions and actions they believe will strengthen our community to work together as one unifying force of goodwill, compassion, of, and hope. On behalf of the entire team of collaborators, please know that we stand in awe of all your submissions we received. And we owe each and every one of our artists the deepest gratitude of thanks for allowing us an inside look of living through the pandemic through your eyes. Greatly appreciated. Now, I'm a firm believer, Suman, of when passion and purpose collide, greatness happens. And this program is a shining example of such greatness. And if I could just maybe take a minute to, I know you thanked all of the, uh, the partners that we were a part of, but I would also like to recognize first you, Vice Chair Suman, uh, for your tireless efforts. I, I learned throughout this process, I don't think you sleep at all. I think that you just go 23 hours a day, uh, but your expertise and coordination was, was just stellar. I want to thank Matt Went, Pamela Medor, of course, Peggy Martin, Steve Cox, Carly Layerfield, 
Chris, thank you very much for bringing the city together with this, as well as Steve and Mark Wasserman, for really raising the bar on, uh, bar on collaboration. But I'm not going to let go of the mic until I see where's Marilyn went. There, oh, there she is. I had to find you in the Zoom meeting. Marilyn, mm -hmm. it was your vision and your encouragement that was first brought to the Morgan Hill Community Foundation Board that really served as a catalyst to bring this program to our community. Marilyn, your vision taught us all that working together under one unifying purpose, we can make a difference one art project at a time. So thank you. You were absolutely just wonderful in bringing this idea to us. And, I, and we can't thank you enough. And again, I just want to thank all for participating and making this an exceptional event. So thank you all. Thanks, Simone. Thank you, thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Alan, that's for you. <laughs> oh, that was very kind. Thank you, Nick. <laughs> Are we going to have anyone speaking? Are we all muted? Because I'm the only one. So, Matt, were you going to say something? Or Marilyn, did you want to say anything? I, I don't think we had. And I think Nick covered what we're going to say on behalf of the Community Foundation. So. Thank you. Very, very well done indeed. Thank you so much. Poonam, it's all yours. <laughs> Great. Thank you, guys. Thank you very much. And uh, we're going to continue with our um, uh, rest of the Library, Culture and Arts Commission meeting. Um, moving on to reports, um, we're now going to have uh, Chris. He's here. Uh, Jennifer couldn't join us today. Um, and Chris is going to be presenting the uh, County Library Report. Um, Chris, it's uh, all yours. Oh, good to see you all, Commission. And, and just thank you. That was really inspiring to see how your coming together to engage your community and, and keep things uplifting in this difficult time. Really inspiring to see. And thanks for including um, Heather and the judges. That's really, really wonderful. And I'm gonna screen share um, my screen so I can show you Jennifer's report. Let's see. Am I able to do that, Chris? Yep, okay. You should, are you able to share a screen? You should be able to. Yeah, it's coming up. Okay. Um, as you've probably heard, um, we've we've reopened our um, library service in terms of curbside, so people are able to come from Oregon Hill. They're able to visit the library. Um, and pick up their holds, which is really exciting. You know, we, we haven't, we hadn't previously been offering this service and it's great to get this back out to your community. We have lots of people who are waiting in line for their holds or placing new holds. And it's so positive to see people coming in and picking them up. Um, we're offering them Monday through Saturday, one to five. And one thing we've adjusted is that we're we're no longer requiring appointments for walk-up. So once you place your hold and you get your notice that your item has been pulled, you're able to walk right up and pick up your, your item from, um, from the library. Um, we're, we're also still doing curbside drop-off as well, where you can make your appointment. And those folks who maybe have an underlying health issue or are really trying to not come in contact with others, our staff will bring the stuff out to you and safely place it in your trunk. Um, and we have a really efficient process in place. So just um, for June 15th is when we started the curbside service. In just those couple of weeks, we've done over 6,000 appointments, over 60,000 returns, over 30,000 new checkouts. So this is getting quite a bit of use and we're really happy to be back and serving your community. Of course, summer reading has kicked off. I think especially in this time where uh, kids are not in school or um, maybe they're not having that face-to-face -face engagement uh, with education the same way they used to, uh, summer reading is, is really critical. It keeps them building those literacy skills over the summer. So of course, as commissioners, you're the leaders in your community. The, the more that you can share that this is going on and encouraging your residents to sign up or youth to join summer reading. We, we appreciate that. 
And um, there will be prizes at the end of um, the program for folks to pick up. And we're still doing lunch in the library, which is in your neck of the woods as well. I think Heather will go, go a little bit more into how, how frequently that's getting used and, and truly how many people are getting fed by, by this service. We had our Joint Powers Authority Board meeting uh, on June 30th. We had a clean audit, which is always great. And we passed our budget, um, which was adopted by the board. So the next one is in October. Uh, one thing we're also really attentive to is um, even though people are coming in to pick up library material, we really want people to be safe. So we're looking at science research that has, has examined um, how long the virus can live on library material. So everything um, that's coming back, our staff don't touch it. And then we actually wait for three whole days for it to quarantine. And that's backed up by actual scientific studies to examine how long um, the virus could potentially live on any number of library uh, items. So we're really being uh, attentive and careful to make sure that as people pick up library material, um, that's all that they're picking up. And that concludes Jennifer's report. There's one more bit I, I need to cover. Um, one thing that the, the library has um, been working on is making sure that we, we have all of our security cameras updated. Um, historically, we haven't had them in Morgan Hill. We've had security cameras in a number of other libraries, but I think since our libraries are popular destinations for family, children, and seniors, we really want to make sure that we're able to monitor it as a safe, welcoming space. Um, so we're planning to install limited surveillance cameras uh, early, in, um, sometime in the rest of the calendar year. Uh, we have a very privacy uh, focused Joint Powers Authority board. So the, the, the placement will be based on the camera surveillance policy we adopted in 2016. And um, to kind of spell out exactly um, how, this, how this plays out, those cameras are only in locations such as the library's entrance, the children's area's entrance, and emergency exits. So they're not in any place where people would expect privacy, but it's just meant as a safety um, measure so that we really make sure that if something ever were to happen, um, that we're able to look, at, look back at, that, at those cameras. Uh, you know, we never like to, to uh, have those emergencies happen, but since I've been here in the district, I know we did have uh, a child abduction in, in Milpitas a few years back. You probably all saw it on the news. One of the positives was that we were able to use that camera footage to help identify uh, the person who uh, left with the child. So this is really just about making sure that our families, our children, and everyone is safe when they visit the library. And um, the cameras record no audio. Um, and we also make sure that the, there is signage in our facility so that anyone coming in will be able to see uh, a posted um, alert that we do um, have that surveillance at the facility. And I'm happy to answer any questions. Um, also, uh, we're also happy to send you our camera surveillance policy if any of you um, would like to look at it further. Great, that's fantastic, Chris. Um, do we have any questions for Chris, commissioners? Um, just comments. Well, thank you so much for everything that you're doing. I know how very hard um, libraries and everyone in the library has been working. Um, and, you know, but libraries are vital at any time, but even more so now. And uh, I really commend you on all of that. And sending a first time a reading, definitely are we going to make sure everyone does that. I read a lot and I always groan and I say, but my book is 900 pages long. <laughs> Sometimes I'm not able to meet that five that five book criteria if it's one of those long ones. <laughs> but I know it's for the children and um, jokes aside. And definitely, I think all of us are going to make sure that everyone signs up. Thank you for all that you do.
Oh, you're welcome. And I, I know you're not sleeping much, as they said on the other presentation. So it sounds like you have a lot of time uh, reading those books. <laughs> I, I still read. I, I just have to. <laughs> and Chris, is, Chris, it's just good to see you. Good to see you all. And, and again, uh, thank you for all the support you're uh, given Heather and, and the Morgan Hill Library as we roll service back out. Can I ask a quick question? Um, Chris, is there, do you know which phase um, for Santa Clara County uh, the, the libraries will be able to have in-person uh, in person participation again? And what I'm thinking of particularly uh, not related to, um, not related to this meeting, but the census work that I'm doing, obviously, um, you know, a lot of people were dependent on utilizing the computers there for their training and yeah. things of that nature. And absent the libraries, they actually just don't have access to that. And we've had a number of people drop the position because they didn't have access to a computer for their training. So I'm, I'm curious if we have any kind of updated information or dates on when, not necessarily group meetings, but when individuals will be allowed to use library resources in the building again. Yeah, we, we don't currently have a date yet for when the public are going to be allowed back in. Uh, of course, you know, the county um, does have retail open and, you know, libraries are, are in that kind of retail space. Um, we're working with the county to make sure that when we reopen, it's in a safe manner, um, that we have restrictions on, on how many people are able to come inside. And one of our main concerns is absolutely around computer access. Um, so in that first day when we come back into our buildings, that's gonna be a part of it, making sure that people who do come in will have um, uh, an access to a limited amount of computer time each day while you know, making sure that everyone's being safe. So as soon as we know, we will definitely be uh, letting the commissions and the cities know when, when, when our buildings are back open. Fabulous, thank you. You're welcome. Great, thank you. Do we have any other questions uh, for Chris? Great, Chris, thank you so much. Really, really appreciate this, all this wonderful information. Thank you so much, good to see thank you. you. Um, next up, we have Heather from the Morgan Hill Library with her report. Good evening, Commissioners. So nice to see you. And my apologies, I sat quietly through the entire meeting and my report coincides with the exact moment children have run into my house and returned. <laughs> <Background noise. laughs> apologies for that. Um, so to start off with, thank you so much for allowing me to judge in the art contest. We've been really busy at the library and it's been such a hectic different time that it was really nice to take a few minutes and see some of the creative creativity that's coming out of um, you know children and teens in Morgan Hill. That was absolutely wonderful. So thank you so much. I really appreciated having some fun doing that. Uh, so back to the library. Um, yes, we've been super busy with uh, curbside appointments for the last uh, almost three weeks now. Uh, Morgan Hill saw 800 appointments June 15th through June 30th. We're also doing our Lunch in the Library program, as Chris mentioned. This year, Lunch in the Library is a little bit different because it's not actually in the library. So what we're doing is serving two-go meals. We serve meals Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. And for families that come, we, uh, they drive up to the building and we serve them the meals in their cars. And we provide them meals for multiple days since we're unable to offer the service every day. And in the month of June, I think we started June 9th through June 30th, we serve just over 3,000 meals uh, to families that were coming. So we've been incredibly busy giving out food, but it's you know really gratifying and wonderful to provide uh, a service that our community needs. And then going all the way back to May, our librarians have been participating in the leading online story times. And back in May, they led five of the district story times and we had 609 uh, families and children attend and participate. And so it was really wonderful to see uh, familiar faces from the library participating online with us. In library news, our expansion project is coming to completion. It should be finished in mid-August. It's been a very exciting time. We've got lots of new furniture coming into the building, getting unwrapped and unboxed, and lots of old furniture going away, so it's been lots of fun. We're also redesigning two of our interior spaces, so when you do have the opportunity to return to the building, 
you'll see that our family reading and play area has been recarpeted. We have new furnishings and we just got an educational play kiosk over there. So there'll be some fun things for children and families to engage in. And we're also redesigning another section of our children's area to create a more collaborative study space for students. And that is that will be ready as well by the fall. Uh, let's see. The library also participated virtually in Morgan Hills 4th, 4th of July parade last weekend with a little video. Um, the parade has been ongoing for so long, we did not want to miss out on it this year. And so we're really grateful that we had the opportunity to put together a little video, video and participate virtually. Um, some highlights of programs that we did uh, over the past couple of months. June 17th, the district hosted an, a teen open mic night where teens from across the district were able to play music, read poetry and sing. Uh, we had Morgan Hill teens participate in that program. It was a really wonderful event to view. Um, it provided an opportunity for teens to share their talents virtually and it was amazing to see just how much talent is out there in our, in our young people. We've also been leading Art Lego and STEM camps for children. Our art camps were viewed over 800 times in June and participants had the opportunity to paint, sculpt and draw and our popular Lego club, which was in person, has moved online and we're seeing over 100 participants at each of those builds. Then really quickly in my Did You Know segment, just wanting to highlight this month that eBooks are not just for adults. We have thousands of eBooks for children through Overdrive Canopy and BookFlix. It's everything from books for teens, fiction for children, nonfiction, books that are paired with stories to help children that are learning how to read, uh, classics and animated storybooks as well. So there's lots of eBook material out there for children that are at home and looking for something to do. And with that, if there's any questions, I'm happy to take them. That's great, Heather. Thank you. Commissioners, do we have any questions for Heather? Just comments. Yeah. I wanted to thank you. Oh, she would, would you like to go? Yeah, oh. go ahead, someone. Oh, thank you. I just wanted to thank you once again for judging the art competition. So, so appreciated. I felt a little guilty asking you, but I'm so glad you said you enjoyed it. Uh, thank you. you. Did a fantastic and amazing job. Loved your comments too. And my goodness, uh, I know how hard you've been working. Thank you again for that. I've always thought I've lived here 21 years in the U.S. and I always think that our free libraries is the best thing about America. That and jazz, and there are lots of other things too. But that's my very very favorite things about the U.S. Um, and <laughs> thank you so much for all you do. It's just awe inspiring. Great, thank you, Suman. Uh, yeah, Heather, I, I would just like to say thanks so much for all the work that you're doing, especially, you know, just the, the anchor of the library in the community is just tremendous. And to hear you said that you're serving 3,000 meals just blows my mind. And I think it's the same for everyone here. That just shows the impact that the library is having especially during this time. I just want to say thank you and to your staff for all the work they're doing. It can't be easy in this time. Uh, you know, everyone is trying to avoid physical contact, but you're forced to be in contact with people just to make sure those meals are, are uh, given out. So um, really uh, touching and thanks so much for the work you're doing and you and your staff. Oh, you're welcome. And I really do have to say, the credit does go to all the staff at the Morgan Hill Library. Between doing the lunch program and curbside services, you know, everyone is having to learn a very new way of working. And every single team member at the library has really pulled together um, with enthusiasm to take on their new roles and they're working amazingly well together. And we're just thrilled to be back and helping the public. So a big kudos to all of them. That's great, Heather, thank you. Um, Heather, I have a question. You have the uh, teen open mic night, which you had on June 17th. Um, when is the next one going to be? I do not know if there's another teen open mic night plan, but I can get back to you on that. Okay, great. Thank you. Um, do we have any other commissioners with any questions for Heather? Okay, well, thank you, Heather. Thank you so much. We really, really appreciate this. Um, next up, uh, Chris, I don't think we have Vicki or um, Kathy today, do we? I did not see them on the call. 
Okay. Well, then next up, it's you. Oh. Uh, Manam, can I speak briefly? I can yeah. say something for the friends if it's helpful. Yeah. So the friends have, you know, because the library has been closed, the friends have not been in operation, but the friends do have an online store on Amazon and they've been selling books online. So if anybody is interested in purchasing used books online, they can support the friends that way. And the friends will be starting a renovation of their store in the next couple of weeks. So they'll have a redesigned space in the library uh, going forward as well. Wonderful. Thank you for that information, Heather. Right, Chris, it's all yours. So I'm going to be uh, just pretty brief on my report, but to give the commission kind of an update where the city is for um, COVID-19. Um, and I think you guys are probably well versed because everything that comes out to us at the city gets to the news media probably like an hour or two later. So you can see <laughs> the state reverse course and we'll have a significant number of things that are opening um, um, on or can be opening on July 13th, uh, pending some specific regulations by industry that are supposed to be coming out this week. So we're working towards that at the, the city, which uh, the biggest thing for us is not likely events um, because indoor events are still capped at 20, outdoor events are capped at 60, um, which means we're not likely to see our community cultural center open. But what we may see is our um, Centennial Recreation Center open. We were able to open our aquatic center for specific activities uh, a month ago with the previous order. So we're going to be looking at what the specific industry guidance is for fitness centers, rec centers, and those things as it comes out this week. And potentially open components of that, which likely won't be the whole facility. Um, but we're making making steps in that direction, um, and um, uh, and you know we've done a lot for businesses as well. So we're just trying to keep moving through this. Uh, City Hall itself will remain closed. There's no um, nothing in the order that would allow office space to open. Everything is still promoting um, uh, working remotely or teleworking. So um, that's still um, where we're going on that end. And um, that that's really all, oh, sorry. And uh, what uh, uh, Chair Chabra mentioned earlier, Commissioner Benich has moved out of the area, so he was unable to um, continue serving because he is outside the, um, the service area. Um, he's moved to Southern California, as he talked to many people about doing, and he finally made it happen. Right. You miss him. So Chris, we still have two um, vacant positions for commissions, right? Um, Commissioner, I mean, uh, Bridget is not here and, um, you know, Bob is not here. So what is, are we getting any, um, you know, resumes or uh, applications for the uh, vacant commissioner positions? Um, yes. And I think, Michelle, are you listening in? Do you want to give an update on that? She might not be. Um, um, I believe that our interviews are scheduled in the, in the coming meetings for the council to interview and then appoint um, commissioners. Actually, um, I can probably double check pretty quickly. Um, okay. On the exact timing. Um, I don't have the exact timing. Um, so I'll have to get back to you on the exact timing, but we are working through um, through that. Okay. Okay. Um, that's great, Chris. Um, do any of you commissioners have uh, questions for Chris? Thank you for working so hard. I know you're there every single day, some meeting or the other. I see you in all the meetings. I, I know that everyone in the city has been working really, really hard and please thank everyone. Uh, will do. Thank you for the kind. Yeah, my sons can't wait for that uh, Centennial Center gym to be open. Me too. Hopefully, hopefully, in next week. By the end of next, week. <laughs> I'll let them know. We'll They'll to look our, out. We'll keep our fingers crossed. Yeah, that's great. Thank you, Chris. Um, all right. Well, moving on to business, um, we've already um, talked about the window art contest update, Suman. You did a wonderful job with that. Uh, commissioners, just Suman has just been amazing right from day one, um, leading the uh, meetings with uh, the creating the flyers, working on uh, the press release and coordination. She's just been fantastic. So um, Suman, thank you so much for all the work that you put in uh, for this uh, contest and fundraiser. 
That's so kind. Thank you. It, it was everyone. We were a team. All of us were passionate. And it was about the kids. It was about the disaster fund. I mean, what's not to like? What's not, to, you know, it was just such a great cause. I just feel truly blessed to be able to be a part of it, really. One of the questions Very impressive. Well, Very here. impressive. Yeah. How much funds did we raise? Do you have any idea? No, I only focused on the art part, as you know. It's my forte, but not, not funds. It's never been. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, well, the next one we um, is to approve the uh, May 5th meeting minutes. Um, any amendments or comments, commissioners? It looked good to me. Can we hear a motion? I'll move to approve the uh, May 5th meeting minutes as written. Anyone to second that? Jake seconding it. Okay, great. All in favor? Aye. All right. Well, the May meeting minutes have been approved. Um, next up, uh, do we have any work plan updates? Paul, did you want to talk about it? We had a meeting yesterday with our open art studios. It was very exciting, but because I've talked so much already, Paul, it's, it's you now. Well, no, I think Suman, uh, it's, it's fine. I, we, we are continuing to meet, uh, as you're all aware of the open art studio planning that we would like to do. So we're gathering the artist community together, uh, gathering the list of artists who are interested and, and I think what we're doing is laying the foundation of that working committee so that when we are, when we can move, we can move pretty rapidly and putting things together. I think one snafu, Suman, you can comment on is the wine. Uh, as you know, this was supposed to be a combination of art and wine uh, studio. And, and Suman, with your contacts in the wine industry, there was a little bit of a snafu and things are put on pause. Did you want to elaborate on that a little for the team? Um, sure. So what we were trying to do was um, this open art studio was supposed to be artists on a particular day or maybe a weekend or a week even. Um, what we were going to do is artists would open up their homes and their studios, but for artists who did, who, you know, just maybe do their artwork in their kitchen or something, we were going to have them be hosted at, at wineries. Um, but however, since currently the wineries it's very it's it, it's really difficult times for the wineries things keep changing for them so uh i so stacy gianni i think um her name is um she is the president of the santa clara wine association she just actually got back to me today to say i'm so sorry we're going to let's put this on hold on our end we're definitely going to do this but as soon as we're ready to um to host the actual open art studio whenever that is possible they are still interested in doing it but of course as you know we don't know when that's going to be um, we have about 50 plus local artists who are absolutely interested in doing this um, and paul and i we've decided we're not giving up no matter what we're going to keep it going we are all going to meet every month just to stay in touch, we were even treated to a fantastic time yesterday at the, the kiln of one of the artists, uh, two of the artists actually, and we got to see greenware and um, got to see, gosh, I've forgotten what the other thing's called, but glazes and it, it was just wonderful. Um, so I'm very excited about it because artists truly, they, they need to be nurtured and that's what we're here for. That's great. So basically, this is just going to be on hold, right? And you're just going to continue with the, with the conversations with the artists for the next few months? Yes. And, we yeah, and typically, we schedule it the Monday before the Tuesday meeting that we have, the LCAC meeting. Okay. So we can give you the latest update, uh, you know, in the next meeting that we have. Very fresh. Okay, great. Okay, so maybe you could just add that to the agenda for would that would the next meeting be in September now, Chris? Um, it, it's up to you all as the commissioners. If you want to keep going bi-monthly, you're very welcome to meet monthly as well. We just um, suggested that, um, but but you can go to September as well, or you could uh, decide to meet in August. It's up to you. Yeah, I think I don't mind better. meeting monthly. 
since it's relatively inexpensive, we could possibly meet monthly too, right? Okay. Um, all right, well, next up, do we have any um, updates on events and fundraising activities? Uh, uh, Chair uh, Chabra, can I just make one point on the last item? Uh, yeah. The So uh, at the previous meeting, the commission talked about updating and working on updating the work plan for the, the next year. And you don't have to do it at this meeting. Um, I think uh, your, uh, I would say, sister commission and the Parks and Rec Commission, they've just kind of left it at is, as is until we get through the, the uh, COVID-19 crisis and they kind of continued working on that. But you're also welcome to update the work plan for this fiscal year. And then we would take that to council. But, but that's up to you as a commission. I think everyone's saying, hey, this is kind of an interesting time and we have limited resources and a lot of the things we were working on, we aren't able to work on. So if you'd rather just make it through and update later, you could do that as well. Yeah, let's, let's hear what all the uh, commissioners want to say about this. I think one of the reasons we had decided to defer was because we wanted to be able to get input from, from new commissioners. Right. Um, so I, I, I would feel a little bit um, that we should either pause Either through, either until we get through the COVID period and we can actively work on some of the things on our work plan again, and or we have new commissioners that are bringing new ideas or maybe have new thoughts of things they want to do and add to the work plan. I thought that's my two cents. Okay. Anyone else? Um, yeah, I agree. I think we should hit pause. I think if we would like to go to monthly, um, that's fine because it's an easy do, right? We're all virtual. Um, so I, I, I would propose that we go monthly and, but we hit pause on the work plan. I think Katie, Katie's, um, suggests a very good one Let new commissioners come on board, get them up to speed. And before we begin to lock down any kind of new plans or ideas. Right. Okay. As for me, I, I, tend to agree that mostly the only part that I was wondering about was I've been having artists talk to me about the utility boxes um, so I think I just want to talk about it I guess we can just continue to accept if they're going to be more artists um, and should I just talk should I you know promote it online so that they can continue to give their designs when we started whenever we started because the artists obviously i don't know if they're even allowed to do it they could possibly be allowed to do it if they did social distancing however the main i think the main thing right now would be getting sponsors which might be difficult during this COVID time um so i know artists and uh during and the COVID. i mean they they are wearing i think they have no work and if if we could do something for them it would be wonderful but i don't know how possible that would be to get donations at this time um, but, but suman that that project is already on the work plan oh i thought you we're, we're talking about modifying the work plan for the next term oh you mean new ones yeah adding taking things off the work plan putting things adding new things onto the work plan right so, yeah i think uh any updates on the work plan we'll get to shortly i think this was input for if we should freeze the work plan where it is and just continue to make progress on the things we can versus actually modifying the work plan for the next year oh absolutely yes in that case i concur yeah and so on i, I agree to what you just said you know maybe we can continue working with the local artists and um, uh, you know see how it goes in a few months as far as sponsorships are concerned uh, but let's continue our uh, conversations with them okay so I think we're good on the work plan then yeah um, Commissioner Thompson do you concur Jake you're on you mute. <laughs> no I think he's he's not on mute but I think he's having audio issues yeah so I think, you know, uh, I think, you know, he said the same thing. We're going to go monthly, uh, pause on the work plan. And just uh, as uh, Commissioner Kara said, we we're going to wait for new commissioners to come in and add to the work plan as, uh, as needed. Um, does anyone else have any questions on this work plan updates? I wanted to just mention um, one of the things that we do um, 
supporting other arts organizations. Um, I had a quick update for Poppy Jasper. Um, you know, a lot of arts organizations like theater companies, um, things that really depend on live events um, have had just, you know, very much changed their, um, the way that they do business and the way that they operate this year under COVID, correct? So one of the things Poppy Jasper is doing is, you know, they're having online, uh, lots and lots of online collaborative uh, films where you can go and buy um, a ticket for a, a, a film for $10, $5 goes to the Poppy Jasper Film Festival, $5 goes to the person who made the film. Um, it's all being set up through Film Freeway. Um, and if you look on their Facebook page, that's just an example of the types of things that arts organizations are doing right now. Um, while you're sheltering in place, you get all kinds of great, very minimally priced entertainment. Um, and you're still supporting, you know, the artists that are out there that are really struggling um, not being able to make their art or at least have their art shown or at least be in the public events that would normally be showcasing their art during this time. So um, Poppy Jasper is just one. I know, uh, you know, Punam and I both sit on that board. So that's one we like to promote um, since they do great, great things and have a great mission. Uh, but all the arts organizations, you know, just because theaters aren't performing live, check them out in their Facebook groups, check them out on their websites. They're all trying to get super creative and find ways to sustain themselves uh, when they actually have pretty much no idea. Oh, Katie, did we lose you? Oh, did we just lose Katie? I Katie's think we lost her. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I, I agree with uh, with uh, with Katie. Um, the other thing that Poppy Jasper is also going to be doing, we're gonna have they're gonna have a drive-in movie uh, at the uh, CCC parking lot, and so uh, we're looking at dates um, to actually showcase uh, a movie sometime in the first week of August or the last week of August. So. If you go on the website um, or, or the Facebook page, you'll find out more information as to when they're having this drive-in movie at the CCC. Um, all right, so um, the next up is uh, updates on events and fundraising activities. Um, I wanted to talk about the international celebration and I really you know, would like to you know, have a dialogue with the commissioners. Do we really want to have this event in on the 3rd of October, considering, um, you know, a lot of the guidelines and um, capacity, attendance capacity issues that we have at this point? I uh, just want to hear from all of the commissioners. What do you think about um, uh, moving forward or uh, maybe delaying, um, uh, uh, you know, delaying the event to next year or something? I will do. I will do as Jake did. Yeah, me too. I think. I think. I think this is our very first one, and it's important for it to be successful. And yeah, I, th I think we possibly need to put this on hold for a while, which yeah. is such a pity. But I think that's the right way to go. Yeah. It's a hard decision to make, but it's the right thing to do. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Commissioner Thompson, I think you said you agree with Paul too. <laughs> and, um, hopefully, Katie will come back on to uh, uh, give her uh, uh, opinion yeah, also. But, uh, but I agree with the same thing. Oh, Katie's right. back. She's connecting. Yeah. She's connecting. So, Katie, we were talking about the international celebration and uh, if we should just uh, cancel the event this year. Um, what are your thoughts? Sorry, my battery died inexplicably and with absolutely no warning. So apologies for that. Um, let's see, International Festival. We, we, was that scheduled for like October? Yeah. yeah that's, so that's, that's scheduled the, for October 3rd. And we had talked about making a decision um, in this meeting. Yeah, um, we, we, we pushed it off for a couple July. of months, sort of waiting to see what we thought was and wasn't going to open. Um, I mean, have we seen any evidence that events containing more than 20 people are going to be allowed at any time in the near? I mean, nothing, right? So I, it's probably just completely useless at this point to pretend like that's going to happen. Exactly. The county's, 
the county what chris indoor events is months before, and the the 60 and 20 are supposed to be set for months now right and 60s outdoor and 20s indoor right correct and so um that would be an extremely small and sad outdoor festival yeah and like suman mentioned you know if you're doing this the first time uh we want to do yeah. this right so that makes a lot of sense. I think that I, it, the writing's just on the wall for us. I don't think there's a lot of option. So I think it's pretty unanimous to, uh, you know, put a hold on the international celebration and uh, just, you know, hold this next year. Yeah. I agree. Well, that's great. Um, so Chris, we're just gonna hold off on the international celebration, uh, not do that this year for sure. And I'll um, inform Debbie and um, uh, the city of Morgan Hill and the Morgan Hill Chamber of Commerce about the decision that we've made. Right, right commissioners, do we have any announcements? Um, I just wanted to say that um, for the historical society, I. I don't know how I can support them. I thought the least I could do was write on their behalf about the high-speed railway and how it's going to impact them. So I did that. I made it like five minutes before the deadline. I wrote to the, <laughs> the high-speed authorities um, and I'm trying my best to keep in touch with them. And that's about as much as I can do. I never like to shirk on my duties. So I will try and find more ways of supporting them. Thank you, Suman. Thank you so much. Um, any other announcements, commissioners? Well, are there any future commissioner agenda items? Nothing. Anything? Uh, Nothing. And so, um, uh, Chris, I think we've all uh, agreed to meet next month. And if there's nothing else, uh, we can officially adjourn the July Library Culture and Arts Commission meeting. And here's my gavel. <laughs> Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Chair. Well done. Thank you, Chair. Well done. Great job tonight. Thank you, guys. Good night, everyone. Very nice. Good night. Bye-bye. Good night, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye, -bye. Bye, -bye. Bye, -bye. Hey, Michelle, are you still there? Michelle.